Hi my dear students welcome to my biology class In the previous sessions we have learned about animal kingdom the animals are classified into various phyla based on their body organization as from simple to complex that is from the phylum porifera the most primitive animals to the highly complex the most complex animals mammals when we think about the body organization of all living organism it starts from a single basic unit which is called a cell so cell is the basic unit of life such many types of similar kinds of cells together form a tissue so cells together form a tissue okay such many tissues together form an organ organ such many organs together join to form an organ system all type of organ system constitute an organism what is a tissue a tissue is a group of cells along with what intercellular substances intercellular substances which performs a specific function okay intercellular substances means the substances that are found in between the cells so we here we are going to study uh, the different types of basic tissues that are found in the complex animal animal tissues are broadly classified into four types those are epithelial tissue connective tissue muscular tissue and neural tissue because the body of complex animals is made up of various tissues organs and organ system each organ and organ system has specific function these functions are performed with the help of specialized animal tissues now let's study the features of each type of animal tissue first of all let's learn about epithelial tissue epithelial tissue has a free surface which face either uh, the outer covering that means uh, on the body surface or into the body fluid that means it forms as an outer covering or lining of the body organs outer covering or lining of the body parts or body organs what does it has it has free surface which face either towards the external environment or towards the body fluid free surface face either towards the body fluids or towards the external environment okay the epithelial tissue the cells are compactly arranged with the little intercellular matrix cells are compactly or tightly arranged with little intercellular matrix intercellular matrix means the substance uh, that is present in between the cells okay based on the number of layers epithelial tissue is of two types those are 
simple epithelium and a compound epithelium. Epithelial tissue short form. Simple epithelium or simple epithelial tissue consists of only single layer of cells. Consists of single layer of cells. While the compound epithelium consists of more than one layer. More than one layer. Okay. Based on the structural modifications of the simple epithelium, it is further divided into three categories or three groups. Those are number one, squamous epithelium. Second one, cuboidal epithelium and columnar epithelium. The simple epithelium is composed of uh, only single layer of cells. Here the cells are compactly arranged with a little intercellular matrix. So these cells uh, form as the lining of the ducts, uh, body organs and glands or tubes of the body parts. So it forms as the protective covering and also it facilitates certain functions in the complex animal's body. Now let's study the characteristic features of each kind of simple uh, epithelial tissue such as squamous, cuboidal and columnar in detail. The squamous, cuboidal and columnar epithelium are made up of single layer of cells. So look at the diagram here. This is the diagrammatic view of squamous epithelium. Here the cells uh, do not have a specific shape. The cells are thin, cells are thin and the cells are flattened in appearance, flattened with the irregular boundaries as there is no particular shape, the cells are polygonal in appearance so with the irregular boundaries. and are compactly arranged compactly arranged with a little intercellular matrix as the tissue is very thin and flat it facilitates the mechanisms like a diffusion because uh, these type of tissues are found in the areas where diffusion takes place in the body where are usually uh, diffusion takes place in our body that is in the alveoli of the lungs and also at the tissue site so that the squamous epithelium is present in at that site that means that the alveolar sac as well as the blood capillary the wall of blood capillary is made up of squamous epithelial tissue so the next point these are found in the areas where diffusion occurs next these are found in the uh, sac the alveolar sac that means uh, the sac is made up of sac of alveoli is made made up of squamous epithelial tissue and also the wall of blood capillary we know that gaseous exchange takes place at the alveolar site in between the air of the alveoli and the blood of the blood capillaries as the uh, membrane is very thin as it is made up of squamous epithelium the diffusion can take place very easily the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place uh, between the alveolar sac and the blood capillary these are the characteristic features of the squamous epithelial tissue Next, let's study the cuboidal epithelium. So, look at the diagram. What is the structure or shape of the cells? The cells are cube-like. Cube-like cells. Here also, with the regular boundaries, compactly arranged. Compactly arranged. Same like this, with little intercellular 
matrix this is very common for all types of simple epithelial tissue compactly arranged with a little intercellular matrix these type of cuboidal epithelial tissues are found in the areas where uh, secretion and absorption occur in the body secretion and absorption for example the tubular part of the kidney and the ducts of salivary glands are made up of cuboidal epithelial tissue example tubular part of kidney that is nephron and the ducts of salivary gland are made up of uh, cuboidal epithelial tissue here the secretion and absorption takes place for example in the tubular part of the kidney that is in the nephron a uh, secretion as well as absorption takes place we have learned about urine formation in uh, lower classes so during the formation of urine in the nephron what happens secretion of certain ions like uh, potassium bicarbonate uh, ions into the filtrate at the same time reabsorption of useful components from the filtrate and uh, so we can easily uh, remember that uh, tubular part of the kidney is made up of cuboidal epithelial tissue ducts of salivary gland salivary gland secretes saliva so that here the salivary gland uh, is an example of the area where cuboidal epithelium is found so one more important thing in the nephron you know that the uh, nephrons are the filtration units of kidney it is uh, it has a bowman's capsule and a tubular part that is a renal tubule uh, and is opened into the collecting duct okay then uh, it has three parts the renal tubule has three parts uh, pct proximal convoluted tubule then henle's loop and uh, dct distal convoluted tubule the pct the uh, the lining of the pct is made up of cuboidal epithelium uh, which has microvilli on its free surface microvilli small hair like projection microvilli on the free surface of pct of nephron okay that's about cuboidal epithelial tissue the next one is columnar epithelium look at the diagram uh, the cells uh, look like uh, elongated ones so the cells are pillar like or slender cells pillar like cells here the nuclei are located at the base of each cell nuclei are at the base it has microvilli on its free surface microvilli on the free surface these type of tissues are found in the areas where secretion and absorption takes place secretion and absorption for example the lining of the intestine and stomach is made up of columnar epithelial tissue the stain and stomach both secrete certain substances especially the enzymes and at the same time they absorb certain useful components or nutrients for the body including water so we can easily understand that uh, the columnar epithelial cells are found or tissues are found in the areas where secretion and absorption takes place so it's very easy to understand the differences between the squamous cuboidal and the columnar epithelial tissue the squamous epithelium is found in the area where diffusion takes place while the uh, cuboidal and columnar epithelium are found in the areas where secretion and absorption take place the next one is the ciliated epithelium if the 
cuboidal cells or columnar cells columnar epithelial cells have cilia on their free surface cilia are small hair like a projection cilia on their free surface these are cilia such ciliated epithelium are known as ciliated cuboidal epithelium and this one is ciliated columnar epithelium okay so what's the main function of this ciliated cuboidal and columnar epithelium cilia helps in the movement of certain particles and mucus in specific direction in some body parts so what is the function helps in the movement of what particles or structures or mucus in specific direction in some body organs like uh, bronchioles of the lungs example bronchioles bronchioles are the fine branches of the bronchi of the lungs so the bronchiole is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium which directs uh, the air towards the lungs to the alveolar sac and uh, it also it is also present in the fallopian tube of the female reproductive system fallopian tube of the female reproductive system uh, there it helps in the movement of ovum through the fallopian tube ovum is non motile so it is moved or transported with the help of ciliated epithelial tissues are lined inside the fallopian tube that is about ciliated epithelial tissue let's study the functional modification of epithelium some of the columnar and cuboidal cells get specialized for the secretion and are called the glandular epithelium this glandular epithelium are specialized for what secretions secretion of certain substances like a uh, hormones enzymes etc based on the number of cells found in the glandular epithelium it is of two types unicellular glandular epithelium and multicellular glandular epithelium so glandular epithelium is of two types unicellular and uh, multicellular the unicellular glandular epithelium consists only single cells while the multicellular glandular epithelium consists of cluster of cells cluster or group of cells for example goblet cells that are found in the pears patches of intestine pears patches intestine so this type of multicellular glandular epithelium is found in the salivary gland there are many multicellular gland salivary gland is uh, one of the multicellular glandular epithelium example salivary gland again based on the mode of secretion of substances the glandular epithelium is further divided into exocrine gland and endocrine gland next exocrine gland and endocrine gland these are the two uh, types of glandular epithelial tissue okay exocrine glands are the glands which have ducts have ducts while the endocrine glands do not have ducts so they are ductless ductless glands 
that means the exocrine glands pour their secretion through the ducts and are reached to the various target tissues or organs so they secrete uh, the substances through the ducts for example uh, milk which is produced in the mammary gland ear wax in the ear uh, then uh, digestive enzymes that are produced in the alimentary canal then oil which is produced by the oil gland of the skin then sebum by sebaceous gland of the skin then sweat by sweat gland of the skin so these are some examples of the substances that are produced by the exocrine gland the endocrine glands mainly secrete hormones directly to the blood directly to the blood so through the blood circulation the hormones are reached to different parts of the body so the major secretions of endocrine glands are hormones they reach to the target tissue or organs the various endocrine glands are pituitary gland pineal gland thyroid gland thymus gland adrenal gland uh, ovary and testes can function as endocrine glands as they secrete hormones so there are different types of endocrine glands in the complex organisms body so these are the divisions of the glandular epithelium based on the mode of secretion of substances the next one is compound epithelium it is made up of many layers of cells so multi layered cells are present in the compound epithelium as they form as multi layered they have a limited role in secretion and absorption limited a role in secretion and absorption but they provide uh, protection against uh, mechanical and chemical stress give protection against what mechanical and uh, chemical stress of the body chemical stress these are mainly found in the dry surface of the skin found in the one dry surface of skin moist surface of buccal cavity buccal cavity pharynx inner lining of ducts of salivary gland and the pancreatic gland okay these are the characteristic features and functions of the compound epithelial tissue then finally let's study about the cell junctions of epithelial tissue in the epithelial tissue the cells are compactly arranged with a little intercellular matrix It means the little intercellular substance is present in the epithelial tissue but there are certain specialized junctions present in between the epithelial cells those junctions provide structural and functional links between the epithelial cells of the epithelial tissue so what is the main function provides structural and functional links between the adjacent cells of the epithelial tissue there are mainly three types of uh, junctions in the epithelial tissue those are number 1 tight junction next uh, adhering junction 
and a gap junction. So, each junction has specific function. First of all, tight junction. The tight junction prevent the substances from leaking across the tissue. So, prevent the leakage of substances. Leakage of substances. So, that is the meaning of the tight junction. It keeps the uh, that adjacent cell together and prevents the leaking of the substances. Next one, adhering. It provides a certain kind of force in between the adjacent cell. It performs cementing to keep all the neighboring cells together. So, it acts as a cementing or perform. Uh, between the neighboring cells. The next one is the gap junction. It facilitates the communication between the adjacent cells. Communication between the adjacent cells. Okay, so it facilitates the transport of uh, ions, then small molecules and big molecules across the uh, tissues. That means one cell to the next cell. Dear students, today we have learned about different types of animal tissues, especially more details about epithelial tissue, its classification, the characteristic features and functions of various types of epithelial tissue and also the different types of junctions that are found in the epithelial tissue. I hope you have understood the topic well. With this, I conclude my session. Thank you and have nice moments.